As we wrap up 2023, I wanted to share with you the changes and upgrades I made throughout the year. Like many of you, changes in our technologies take place throughout the year, and it's always kind of interesting to go back and reflect on those changes and to see what they were. In this video, I'll cover each piece of hardware, discuss some of the reasons behind it. So stick around for the rest of this video if you want to see the latest updates. And please don't forget to subscribe and give this a like if you find this video useful. For 2023, I'm continuing my trend for simplification and performance. As my needs grow and more devices and services are added to my network, it becomes increasingly important to me that things work smoothly and that everything requires low maintenance. I'll go through every room and discuss what was changed during this past year. To get this tour started, I wanted to start with the office as typically that's the area that receives the most changes throughout the year. I'm still running three smaller racks in the office, so starting with my top rack, the main change here was the addition of the Unify Enterprise PoE 8 port switch. This is an 8 port 2.5 gigabit PoE plus switch that has 120 watts of power budget. In addition to the 2.5 gigabit connection, it comes with two 10 gig SFP plus ports. I needed this switch to add 2.5 gigabit PoE support to my Unify Enterprise access points. You really should use 2.5 gigabit uplink to fully support the bandwidth of Wi-Fi 6E and prevent any bottlenecks. I'll post a link below on a video I did on Wi-Fi 6E so you can see the bandwidth limitations. Below that is the same 24 port PoE switch that was implemented the prior year which is now mainly used to power many of my PoE cameras and non-Wi-Fi 6E access points. I'm still using the QNAP 1208 12 port 10 gigabit switch, but I did upgrade the patch panel to simplify future expansion. I also added a Zima board to the mix. Currently, this is mainly used for testing. Moving down to the lower rack, the Unify SE and the aggregation switch still remain from my previous upgrade. The main addition here is the Unify NVR to drive all of my security cameras. I recently did a separate video on this that goes into more detail, but over the past year I've migrated my Blue Iris NVR and my various Amcrest cameras to the Unify Protect. I had been running both for quite some time and was very impressed with the performance and most importantly the ease of use of the Protect system. Like all Unify devices, everything auto updates and I rarely need to worry about it. As chance would have it, the computer I was using with Blue Iris failed and I decided to take the plunge and completely migrate to the Unify Protect, bringing new levels of simplicity and performance. Below that is the same TVS951X NAS unit that's been my primary data storage for years. I backed that up to a QNAP TS453D, which was actually replaced in 2022 as my original version of this NAS failed after many, many years. I've done several videos on my backup strategy, which I will post in the description if you want to find out more on the topic and how I do it. The rack-mounted computer below used to be my Sophos firewall, but it's currently not being used. I'll repurpose this PC for something else next year, as soon as I establish what I want to do. Below that is a series of UPS units to provide battery backup to all the network gear on these two racks. The two APC units on the left are new, but only one of them is a full UPS. The second one is actually an extended battery for it, which plugs directly into the device and provides extended runtime. This configuration provides three times the uptime compared to the standalone UPS unit as the extended device contains two battery packs. This allows me to power the entire top rack that we just reviewed, which draws close to 200 watts for close to 45 minutes, which includes powering all the PoE devices. Moving on to my third rack, this one has only seen a couple of changes. The top section is still running the XG, but I added a PoE light switch, which not only gives me more 1 gigabit ports, but it adds PoE plus as well. This main change on this rack was the addition of a mini PC. This has only one purpose in life, and that's to be a subnet router for Tailscale. For a long time, I ran this function as a virtual machine, and it worked great, and I still actually use it as a backup. However, I wanted a dedicated low-power PC to run Ubuntu and serve as a primary Tailscale subnet router. Tailscale has become very critical to my daily tasks, and I didn't want to rely 100% on a VM in the event that the host went down while I was away. Having this as my primary and having the VM as a backup allows me that extra peace of mind. 
Moving over to my desk, there's been some major changes this year with the addition of the Mac Studio. This is the Max M2 version equipped with 64 gigs of RAM and 2 terabytes of internal storage. Even though I run a mixed environment and run both Windows and Mac, and I still have my Core i9, the Studio has become my daily driver for video editing. To supplement the Studio, I use the Sonatec docking station, which I also did a video on. It's currently one of my favorite docking stations. Attached to the docking station is the Zyke drive, which contains a 2TB Samsung Pro. In the master bedroom, the requirements are pretty small, so not much has changed except for the addition of a small mini switch so that I can really take advantage of VLANs. Moving over to the family room, the biggest change here was the addition of my Flash-based TrueNAS server, which is entirely used for editing my YouTube content and any active files that I'm currently working on. Normally I would rack mount this, as this is actually a rack mounted device, and I will eventually move it. However, I wanted to spread some of the devices to other rooms and start reducing the power footprint and heat from my office area to some of the other rooms. I will be most likely adding one or two small racks in other rooms and relocate some of the items for both aesthetics and heat. My Unify Flex XG and my Mini are from last year's upgrade and my backup NAS is also a carryover from several years ago. The main changes in the living room was the upgrade to the PoE 16 Lite. This provides PoE for my security cameras as well as my new viewport device. The viewport is a Unify product that allows you to project some or all of your cameras to your TV or monitor without the use of a computer or mobile device. In this application, my goal was to be able to quickly switch and view all the outdoor cameras at once right on my TV using just the TV remote without messing around with software, app, or a computer. This makes it a whole lot easier to others in the household, and it's much easier to access when you just quickly want to see what's going on. One of the biggest transitions for me this year was the full migration to Unify Protect. I won't go into all the details as I did a separate video on this, which I'll post in the description if you want to find out more information about it. This change has been big for me, and I've been thrilled with the results. This definitely simplified things, especially when it comes to setup and maintenance. The last of my upgrades is my Unraid server, which isn't new. But I did do a significant storage upgrade, replacing the older 6TB drives with larger capacity 12TB drives, bringing my total storage up to 54TB. My Unraid server is mainly used for VMs, backups, media storage, and as a YouTube video archive. I'll be replacing the remaining three 6TB drives with 12TB drives early next year and raise the total available storage to 72TB. My configuration changes and most of my updates this year have been largely centered around the Unify ecosystem. I'm not sponsored by Ubiquity in any way, but with the exception of my QNAP 12 port 10G switch, the balance of my devices have been converted over to Unify. After using it for a while now, I can honestly say that it's been worth it, and I wish I would have started with their hardware originally. There are many choices out there when you create or expand your network. And if you're like me, you started building your network with low-cost hardware from various brands and never gave maintenance, updates, security, and configuration changes a whole lot of thought until you had more than a few devices. As it turns out, when you're using different manufacturers' equipment, it takes quite a bit of time when you're learning their interfaces, expanding your network, and making frequent changes to your network, such as adding VLANs, and not to mention checking and applying firmware updates to keep your network secure. Using something like Unify just makes things a whole lot easier. Many other manufacturers make comparable, less expensive, and possibly even better hardware. However, they lose sight of the user experience, as well as the learning curve. As an example, in a simple network with a firewall and three switches, I need to log in to four different devices, check for updates, and apply the patches as needed. If I'm working with VLANs, I need to configure the interfaces and rules in my firewall, and then log into each switch to configure them as well. To make things worse, many of the manufacturers either don't patch their stuff at all or patch on different schedules, amplifying the problem. Many, if not most manufacturers, forget that they have a large audience of home users and enthusiasts that are learning and want to keep their networks secure and patched. This audience doesn't manage networks for a living and would benefit from a more straightforward and consistent way of managing, changing, and keeping their network secure. I challenge other manufacturers to consider a similar path of a single controller with a common interface, which in my opinion would benefit the novice, the experienced, and the enterprise user. 
I have many more projects planned for 2024, including building a low-cost DIY router for those looking to increase their security and don't want to change to a new ecosystem. Some exciting new products that I'll be testing in the continued tutorials on a variety of topics. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications. Anyway, that's it for this video, and I want to wish everyone a happy new year. Thanks for supporting the channel, and I'll see you on the next video.